Hello everyone and welcome to another news coulomb video and another one of these uh, battery terminal uh, installation <laughs> videos. It, you know, I, I know some of you had mentioned, oh, you're still, you're still putting these terminals in. And you know, the only thing I can say to that is, well, yeah, <laughs> obviously I am. Um, but uh, this isn't the only aspect of the project that I'm working on. So I've got a, uh, a lot of other things that I'm doing too. So I'm just trying to, to get these in um, as I have a chance. And, you know, dealing with a hundred of these cells is, is pretty hard to do because they're heavy and big and bulky. So, um, you know, I'm pushing the, the weight limits of this bench right now um, as it is and, you know, just space wise. And I have um, right now three banks of these batteries that are all in parallel. Um, top balancing so it's it's basically a um, 20 uh, 20p banks so three 20p banks of these batteries all uh, top balancing which means I have two more banks left to do and just not a whole lot of space to do that in uh, it's been getting down into the 30s at night too so yeah so it's not it's just not that all, all that easy to um, to get all of this done in one sitting and so I have other things that I you know work on I have to take care of the property renovations things like that too so it's not it's not just this Ford Ranger project and even with the Ford Ranger project it's not just putting these battery terminals in so anyway an, uh, you know enough about that I actually wanted to talk about something that I've seen a lot of these articles I think erroneous articles about thermal management being the limitations for some of these traditional automakers and their batteries. In particular, um, I think it was Inside EVs maybe was uh, recently picking on the Ford Mustang Mach-E, talking about thermal management being responsible for what they called uh, slow charging, right? 150 plus kilowatt peak charging rate is somehow slow right now, but that's that's neither here nor there, um, but they, they were attributing it to the thermal management system oh, and, and, and uh, power let offs, right? But this is all coming on the heels of the Ford Mustang Mach-E GT, which uh, has a power boost, which I mentioned in another video about uh, power density, uh, that power boost, that like five second boost likely matches the, the pulse discharge rate of the battery, right? So there's just not a whole lot uh, more that the battery can give um, while staying within specs. It has nothing to do with the actual thermal management system. But it got me thinking, well, why does that have to be a limitation? And, you know, people will point to, uh, you know, the likes of Tesla, Lucid, Rivian, uh, where they're using those higher power density cylindrical cell batteries uh, so they can kind of have their cake and eat it too, right, in terms of uh, power density, uh, energy density, uh, but the, the thing again that you have to give up on that is cost. And, uh, that, that's, that's why, you know, you'd look at, you know, even, even with Tesla's, um, you know, uh, economies of scale, you're not talking about affordable cars, right? You're essentially talking about the equivalent of say a Honda Accord or a Toyota Camry that costs, you know, upwards of forty-five, fifty thousand uh, dollars, without a whole lot of other, you know, trimmings, right? So that's an actually very overpriced car, really, for what you're getting. And then, of course, uh, Rivian and Lucid are both also um, very expensive cars, and so or trucks, right? And so you're kind of getting what you pay for because those cylindrical cell batteries, while yeah, they can be high energy density and po high power density, they're also a very expensive to put together. Uh, you're managing a lot of different cells, a lot of, a lot of different contacts. You know, I'm putting together a battery here with 100 cells and this is complicated enough. Imagine literally 40 to 50 times that many cells in a single battery because, you know, you're welding them all together. It, 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 it's an expensive process. It's a difficult process. And, um, you know, if you're, you're looking at consumer or mass market vehicles like the Chevrolet Bolt EV and EUV, the, uh, even the Ford Mustang Mach-E uh, Select or, or Standard Range Select or the VW ID4, those are all, as far as EVs are concerned, very affordable 
options, and all of them use cheaper to construct pouch cells. So, uh, so the question then becomes: Can can you have your cake and eat it too in terms of uh, power density, energy density, and cost? And and I think there's actually a way. Uh, that you can. And and it's one of those things where I, I'm curious why nobody in the industry so far has considered mixing battery chemistries. Now, um, I, I know it adds a, a management element to it, uh, but think about a Ford Mustang Mach-E GT with a much uh, lighter standard range battery that happens to have an additional maybe one to five kilowatt hour um, supplemental pack with maybe a 10c output rating or or whatever the case may be right or a 20c output rating so you're you're, you're looking at being able to add 50 to 100 to 150 horsepower with a relatively small um, investment in an additional pack basically what you're looking for is something that holds enough energy and, and it may, maybe doesn't even need to be that big, right? Because you talk about like super capacitors um, where, or, or, or just very, like I said, high output um, battery cells where, you know, I think it was the um, Pulse EVs channel I was watching, they were doing uh, multiple quarter mile runs in the Ford Mustang Mach-E GT. And yeah, and they were hitting that power limit after, after about five seconds of that boost. But when you looked at the energy that they were using, they were using about 1% of the battery for every quarter mile run. So even a one kilowatt hour pack, a uh, supplemental pack with high, high power output would be enough to give you a 10 second boost or enough for a quarter mile run at that full power and you wouldn't need a full 100 kilowatt hour battery pack to do it. So you could save weight um, by using a smaller uh, battery pack and you could save, um, you know, save cost by using a smaller battery pack. And then of course, again, you could have your cake and eat it too because you'd have a higher output supplemental pack that would, you know, shore up all of the differences in terms of power um, capabilities while not adding weight and not adding a significant amount of cost relative to a, a you know a much larger pack. Um, right now, the only one I know of that has technology that allows mixing chemistries within a pack uh, is GM with their Ultium battery packs. You can use different chemistries um, in different modules, but um, their battery management system is set up to do it, but I, I think you could actually just set up a unique system to do it as well. And this isn't, you know, this isn't a new idea. Um, it's actually something that they've been doing in uh, Formula One racing for a very long time. And it's what they what they refer to as a KERS kinetic energy recovery system. So they they don't have a generator, they don't have a charger, they don't have a, um, you know, they don't have a uh, another battery that they're using to uh, to to charge their onboard KERS system, but what they do have is regenerative braking, and that regenerative braking system, as you know, as they're going into a corner or whatever, it's absorbing all of that energy, putting it into a uh, bank of capacitors or a battery bank, and then they're able to use that. Um, in their hybrid electric uh, powertrains to power out of corners or whatever. So this this isn't a, a new idea. It's just they've only used it on gas cars. Well, electric cars could use a KERS system as well. And I think maybe even more effectively than a gas car could use that system because, again, you already have a charger on board. You already have batteries and energy on board. Uh, you can just charge the battery whenever you want. And, you know, when you hook up to a battery charger, it will top it off. When you're regenerat regenerative braking, it'll fill it up. And you'll have this 10-second power boost enough to, you know, go a quarter mile um, at your highest or peak power rates, and you aren't going to have to worry about having a, more, a larger, more expensive battery uh, just to do that. So, anyway, I wanted to... to talk about that like I said as I as I finish up this this bank of uh, batteries the last ones I have terminal posts to do 
Um, but yeah, just mixing battery chemistries or battery formats or battery types so you're, or cell types within a larger battery. So what you can end up with is the best of both worlds and in fact the best of three worlds because like I said, unlike Lucid, uh, Rivian or Tesla, you're not going to have to be charging an exorbitant amount for a capable EV sports car. You can have all of that power and a decent amount of range and fast charging um, all with a smaller, lighter, cheaper battery pack. Anyway, uh, you know, I'd love to hear what you think about this idea. Um, why do you think other, you know, automakers haven't considered it, haven't implemented it? Um, even if it's two unique BMSs rather than a single one like the Ultium system. If you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And uh, thank you for watching.